Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in this video, I'm going to show you a super cool way in order to set up what you call a quiz funnel or anything like that inside of ClickFunnels. And uh, there's been other versions of this that I've done and seen other people do where they're using buttons and they're using the hide show effect and all that. Well, part of the problem with that is there's a bit of an animation in how that occurs. And actually, the part that shows when you hit the button and you do the, your side uh, hide show the part that shows actually shows on the screen prior to the part that hides and so it causes kind of a clunky uh, view for the user and so what I decided was I wanted to be able to get rid of that problem and also to uh, be able to save all of the information as we go along so one of the other problems with the some of these methods is is once you click a button and you save the information it wants to go to the next page so you can put in have somebody put in 20 different answers and it won't get saved along the way until you click that very last submit button the way I have this set up is it saves each bit of the information as you go along so let me show you how this works so I already started off this a little bit just enough so that it created this uh, dummy email account for me inside of my contacts and what you're gonna see is when we get done this this area down here is going to be populated with all the answers that somebody put in. So what we're going to do is come back to this page here and all you got to do to get started is just come up here and click on this link. It'll bring you to the home page. You could also just click here on this home page as well. <coughs> and I'll walk through it first and I'll come back and explain how it's done. So we're going to click on that button. We're going to land here on this page. And one of the things you'll see on this page is this top section will be hidden after we hit the button and new content will appear. So we're gonna go through the entirety of the quiz and then when they're done with the quiz, they're gonna come back to this exact same page, but it's gonna look completely different because we hid the part that we don't wanna show them. Now, you could keep it relatively the same but just like a swap out one section for another section, however you want it to look. Um, just get the bigger picture idea here. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this button, and this button is actually going to open up the pop-up. So we open up the pop-up. Here's that email address is stayed in here because it was stored into what they call local storage or a cookie, if you want to think of it that way. And so we're going to say, oh, yeah, I, I definitely want to give my email address because I want to get my Animal Spirit workbook and a free special gift. So you got to entice them to put in their email address at this point but because we put in the email address now as we go forward it will be saved so by clicking this that's what I did in order to cre create this part right here so now we'll come back to our page and we got a bunch of questions here and you're gonna say oh well we got this email address on the screen you need to have that on the screen but it doesn't need to be showing so we can just hide this element and the consumer will not see it. They will just see these questions that you have. And I just put in some dummy questions in here uh, with some information so it would populate for us. And then we're going to here click to sign up. Now, this is the first question in here, assuming you got four, five, six, ten different questions. We're going to go through here. It's submitting the page. So at that point right there, it just saved that data to the ClickFunnels database. And here it is. Here is that data instantaneously into the contact database and then we get to the next one again you would hide this email address right here unless you wanted to leave it on the screen for some reason I don't know why you would and so then we're going to uh, click this button assuming this is the last question on the page now we're going to click that and it is going to close it and now we're going to say thank you for signing up where we are going to have the button set to close the pop-up the first button on the first First page open the pop-up this one is going to close the pop-up pop-up slides off what we had here initially disappeared was hidden now where we told them to sign up for their animal quiz or whatever the heck I called it and now this is the uh, last section after we come back so this would be showing in place of the stuff that you want hidden and so let me show you how simple this is to set up so we got our home page and you see here we got our home page then we got the page where we input our email 
So you're going to build this just like a funnel. You're going to then put in your first question, your last question, and then your thank you, where we'll have the close pop-up button and send them back to the original page right here. Now, how are we able to do this? Two things. We put an i an iframe. We embed actually this page right here into the iframe inside of the pop-up on the home page. So the email page is embedded inside of the pop-up on the home page. So when we open up that pop-up on the home page, it will show us this email page. Now, the built-in functionality of ClickFunnels is when you click a submit button, it wants to go to the next page in the funnel doesn't care where it is when you click that button. So we're going to stay actually inside of that iframe. So we opened it up here. Uh, sorry, we opened it up here. We opened the email page up here inside of an iframe. And then when we click the submit button on the email page, it will take us to the first question page. Uh, same thing, first question page, when you click the submit button, submits the information to the contact database, will move us to the next page, the last page, or last question. In this case here, when we click that button, it will take us to the thank you page. On the thank you page, it closes the pop-up. So let me just show you that. In real life, here we go, we're gonna edit this page. And it's quite simple, let me just show you the pop-up first. All you have inside of the pop-up is this custom JavaScript HTML box. And we came in here and it's just a very simple syntax, iframe source equals this is the URL the link to the email page and we got height 100% with 100% and then the closing iframe tag right there. If you can't see it very well on the page, just Google it. You can find it a million different pages, your simple iframe embed code like that. And so all you have to do there is you got to go to the email page, grab a hold of the link really quick, which I'll show you how to do that right now. Let's click OK on this and close that out. And so we just come down here to this email page right there, highlight it, click on that. That's where you grab the link to that page. And then you would bring that over and you would put it inside of the code, inside of the pop-up right in there. That's all you have to do. So then, like I said, is the native function of ClickFunnels is when the email page, the submit button is clicked on the email page, it will submit it to the contact database, create a new contact with that new email address. And then every subsequent page where you also have that email address, it will then take the data, the questions that were answered, the input fields that are on the page and dump that again into here. And you see, I hadn't shown you this before, but here custom two was all fives, meaning that was the second, that was the last of the questions that we had of the two questions on the page. So let me go back into here. So that is pretty much it on this page here, except there is a little bit of code we have to put in. And we have to also set this button to open the pop-up. So you make sure you got that set. And the little bit of code that we have, let's go to the CSS first. We got here container modal. That's a class of one of the elements. We need that to be a height of 90% of the viewport height, 90 VH. And then we have this longer one here, L custom HTML JS code wrapper, and then a caret and span. So we want to find this particular element on the page because we need to set the height. If you don't do this, the element's only gonna be, you know, it's barely tall enough to see what you really want inside of it. So I set it here to 900 pixels. You may have to play around with that to decide what is the proper height for yourself. And you also have to put in here display block because what it wants to do is it wants to display it as in line, which then that's what actually causes it to be really short. If you say block, then it'll take up the whole of the 900 pixels that you are saying. And then the other thing we're going to do here is we're going to say pop up button, hashtag pop up button, click function. And let me show you that. So in this particular button, I came in here and we'll go into the code. I just 
just gave it this ID down here of pop-up button, and then I have two sections on the page. One has the ID of section one, the other has the ID of section two. So again, we come in here to our first section, and we go to our code, and it says right there, section one. And in fact, what I should just do is call this section one as well, and update that. It will go into our layout. Now it says section one right there. Let's do the same thing here with section two. We'll move this out, section two, and we'll update that. Now both of them should say section one and section two right up in there. And then let's go back into our code. And so we say then when we click on that ID of pop-up button, we want to hide section one and show section two. It's all you got to do in there, and then that's it. We'll just save this. Now, for the rest of the subsequent pages here, we'll go into the email page. Again, all you have to do in here is, so and this is the one where we are collecting the email address, so you want to make sure this one is visible, and we're going to say to submit the form. So we're going to go into question number two. Again, you can use any of the input types you want in here. You do have to have this email element on the page, but you can come in and you can hide it, and it will ju work just fine because you're not actually having them type in. It is populating it because the email address was used... Uh, was stored into what is known as local storage, and they use inside of ClickFunnels a JavaScript library known as Garlic, which causes that email address to persist from one page to the next. So it can easily just pick it up and save it. I'm not going to save this page because I don't want to hide that email and forget about it. And we'll come in here to this one here. Again, hide the email input, put in whatever kind of other inputs you want on this page because they will all get stored when you submit the form by clicking this button and then on the very last page here we don't need anything on this page all we need to do is set this button to close the pop-up and if you do all those things I mean it sounds a little complicated but it really really isn't and as you saw the it, the total on this was uh, essentially basically one line of CSS code or one line of JavaScript code here and a little teeny tiny bit of CSS and you have just accomplished now and that iframe of course um, but you have now accomplished the ability to go from question to question to question and be able to save the content the answers that your user put in every time they click the button so you don't have to worry about losing it. You don't have to have them go through 10 questions and then have them bounce or turn their computer off or the kids come into the room, uh, start yelling and screaming, and they walk away from it. At this point here, you have stored their email address on the very first click. You store all their subsequent answers after that. And if they do manage to get down to the end of this thing and they get down here and they click onto the thank you page, you probably also want to set up some sort of a workflow at this point that will then send them out their their answers, send them out their free gift, make sure you give them their bonuses if you use that to get them to put in an email address, and then start them on some sort of an email follow-up uh, routine like that as well. And also you can put in here that once somebody uh, triggers this page here, actually you probably have to do it here because you need to collect that email address. Once this email address is triggered, you put a delay on a workflow that says, okay, if they have not then clicked the thank you button within 30 minutes, then we're going to start emailing them as well and getting them to come back to this form so that you can continue to nurture them throughout your follow-up sequence. So if you have any questions on any of this, just let me know.